Kubernetes, Power BI, Xamarin? How does the developer, IT admin, analyst, or solution architect keep up with all the latest technologies? Microsoft Learn can keep you one step ahead. First off, Microsoft Learn offers free, interactive, hands-on training and is always available at no cost to you. With more than a thousand plus courses and growing, find a wide variety of topics, including Azure, artificial intelligence, business applications, modern workplace, and Windows development. These modules offer a concise, interactive, and friendly way to pick up new skills as you venture into new career paths or start preparing for Microsoft certifications. You can complete most of them in 15 to 60 minutes. All have been translated into a variety of common languages. Want to fill in the big picture? Learning paths guide you through a series of logically connected modules. You can work along the path, gaining experience points and badges as you go. Make your own journey by creating and sharing a custom collection of modules for you and your team. And use bookmarks to save your favorites to come back to later. A personalized homepage will always keep you up to date. Learning is hands-on. The sandbox environment uses real Azure. You are working with real resources in exactly the same manner as you would with your own subscription. When possible, you can choose your preferred platform to learn on. Want more personal instructor-led training? Microsoft Learn can connect you with a variety of qualified learning partners to take your technical skills to the next level. Want to browse through Microsoft Learn to see what it offers? Head to microsoft.com learn and check out your opportunities. We've created a platform to help you learn at the pace of change. Have you ever heard a robot with a Kiwi accent? Probably not, hey? Well, I'm here to tell you that's going to change. See, us New Zealanders are good at a lot of things. But now we're getting good at robots. Well, artificial intelligence, actually. Through Microsoft's Imagine Cup Junior, we're going to be learning about really awesome technologies. Then inventing the best robot in the world, or actually the best AI. Imagine Cup Junior Aotearoa for Kiwi High Schoolers. Change your future, change the world. Around the world, young people are leading the way on imagining a better future. Together, we can help them take on the local and global challenges we're all facing to create a better future for all by giving them the skills to use game-changing technology to drive change. With Imagine Cup Junior by Microsoft, access future-focused learning resources, learn about how artificial intelligence works, and dream up world-changing ideas. Teachers, get your class started. Register for the challenge and download your free curriculum-aligned resources today. Imagine Cup Junior by Microsoft. Change your future, change the world. All right, good morning, change makers of tomorrow. First of all, thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. Yeah, grave as we launch Microsoft Philippines Imagine Cup Junior 2022. So my name's Princess Legaspi, and I will be your host for today. What a great initiative to empower every person, particularly our students, to achieve more, isn't it? Diba? Actually, this event takes me back to my fondest memories back in my high school and college days. And also, this event is a great opportunity for me to also see what are the latest technology and the opportunities that await our Gen Zs right now, which we have in our audience. And also would like to know, no? Siguro we have our ac academes also in here, our teachers, our professors. Ano ba yung mga lingo nila? The, the Gen Z lingos that you currently hear. I wanted to know because I wanted to be in and I wanted to go back to my younger years, like mga 10 years ago. Ayan. My age is being revealed now. And to our students, hello. You guys, thank you so much for um, being online Saturday morning, right? So that's great. And thank you so much. I hope that you guys would have fun and would learn a lot for today. We have an amazing line of speakers to see and also to hear on what they have to say as well. I am super excited because I myself am um, an advocate of education and also 
I wanted to introduce technology to them as well. I used to work at a digital transformation company, IOTs and AIs as well, and I really believe that we are going there as well. And also there's a lot of things for us to teach our younger generation when it comes to the benefits of AI and what it can really do to our community and our country because we're really lacking when it comes to that. So I can't wait to hear that. Now we got a one of a kind ride as we take on this Imagine Cup journey. Of course, Microsoft wants to enable access to every student with the right tools resources and opportunities like i said earlier so to help them learn new skills and prepare them for the future workplace so a few reminders before anything else this event may be recorded and shared publicly with others including microsoft's global customers partners employees and service providers the recording may include your name and any questions you submit to q and a so for questions and clarifications, you may type them in our Q&A box. You also have an option to submit your questions anonymously. We also have a feedback form. Of course, we would like to hear from you guys and what you think about our event for this morning. And we will be sharing the link as well for the QR code for you to scan as well. You know, remember those times we're in we're so new to QR code, we don't know and how to use it, right? But now it's all over. Even our payment schemes are now via QR code. When we want to see the menu, it's via QR code. Everything is QR code, no way it is. So if you know other technological and digital Ooh. advancements or new things, you can also comment them para. I can also mention it to our Gen Z's watching right now. And of course, feel free to share all the latest happenings in this journey by using our official hashtags, hashtag Imagine Cup Junior 2022 and hashtag Imagine Cup Junior PH. Now, I'm also very happy that every event that I am hosting, we have this specific hashtag. Right? Hashtag is all over as well, even if in every event, in weddings, in birthdays, right? The abuse, business events, launches, hashtags is everywhere. And it's also a way for us to track on what actually happened during that time. So it's it's awesome, you guys. So also, once again, I would like to remind you of our hashtag once again, just in case you wanted to post your selfies, your groupies, or you wanted to document or keep memories of what's going to be happening for today's event. Once again, that's hashtag Imagine Cup Junior 2022. Yeah, and so you can always put that and don't forget to tag us as well. So I have been hosting a couple of Microsoft events. So thank you so much, you guys, for always having me. And it's always very insightful and enlightening to everyone you know that i guess that's one of the perks of being a host as well that you get to attend these awesome events and to share it with our awesome audience as well so i hope our gen Z's would also be very interactive right during the q a so just ask away and actually it's one of the greater things about today's generation they're so inquisitive they always question things and i think that's a good thing us adults should always have the answer for them. I don't know. So how do you guys answer the younger generations? They're always asking why, right? Like it's a never ending why to our statement. So what do you think about that? I think it's cute, right? And also, once again, we got a great line of speakers waiting to share their insights and they're ready to help you overcome the technological challenges of today, which I can't wait to know and hear as well. So I won't keep you waiting. Here to deliver her welcome message, let us all welcome the Education Programs Lead of Microsoft Philippines, Clarissa Segismundo. But before anything else, I would like to hear from our audience once again. So to our academe, our professors. So how do you spend your morning? Before you interact with your students or the younger generations, how do you prepare um, what you teach them, what you tell them? So, and also what's the kind of approach that you do 
especially during these times, right? Like right now, everyone's online. So I wanted to know the difference because it's way behind my time. So please feel free to put them in our chat box and I will mention them later. So now to start and give a brief discussion regarding what you need to know about this year's Imagine Pop Junior. Okay. There's no better. Okay, there's no better person to lead us through it other than the developer, product, marketing manager of Microsoft APAC, Mr. Ian Discourse. But before that, let's all watch this. Where does inspiration come from? Where does innovation begin? Where does the future really start? Our story began in a dorm room in 1975 on a strip of paper. And from there, a vision was born. We designed technology to build, technology to grow, technology to learn, explore, and create. And we turned a world of possibility into a world of reality. But no journey is without obstacles. And our challenges only encouraged us to go further. This is a new chapter. With new frontiers. New possibilities. New obstacles renewed passion and vision to face them all. It is our mission to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. All right. Wow. Good morning, Ian. I see you on my screen. Hello, yeah. good morning. Hi, this, yes, good morning. Yes. To our virtual participants joining us for this uh, virtual bootcamp of Imagine Cup Junior 2022. All Hi, right. Um, I hope uh, all of you and your family are all safe. And by the way, I'm Ian DeTorres. I'm the Developer Product Marketing Manager for Microsoft uh, APAC. And today I'm going to talk about uh, what the Imagine Cup Junior 2022 is all about. So next slide, please. Um, Microsoft's uh, powerful mission is really to empower every person and every organization in the planet to achieve more. And with that, Imagine Cup Junior is yet another way that Microsoft is trying to do this for young people like you, to our virtual participants across the world. And even teachers, educators, school leaders, are working so hard to do these already. So Imagine Cup Junior, Junior is actually an, another free learning opportunity for everyone from Microsoft to support your great work and do uh, great things. So that slide. And if you may have been thinking, um, what is Imagine Cup Junior? So this year we celebrate the 20th year of Imagine Cup which is our collegiate student competition. It's one of the most premier student global uh, technology competition of Microsoft. Uh, and with tens of thousands uh, of universities age students having moved through this program in 2020, um, Microsoft has decided that high school students shouldn't have to wait. So for this Imagine Cup Junior is a technology challenge for ages 13 to 18 years old that helps them to be technology uh, innovators uh, capable of making a difference in the world. Next slide. So there's actually a lot of benefits uh, for the students joining us right now to be involved in this Imagine Cup Junior. So there's actually no coding is involved. So no coding, no programming. It's just that you have to come up with an idea in a PowerPoint submission template. Later on, our partners, our learning partners, and some of my Microsoft colleagues will be talking about on how you can join uh, the Imagine Cup Junior. And whilst the theme for Imagine Cup Junior changes, 
this year we are focused on AI for good. I have a Microsoft colleague will be talking about more about what is the AI for good for Microsoft. Next slide, please. And as you can see on the slide, um, we do have three uh, parts that you can join in. Uh, the first one is you can definitely learn all about AI. We'll be providing you different resources on how you can get started to learn AI. And you can get a lot of information, different office hours where you can get, uh, you can raise concerns and questions. And at the end of the uh, Imagine Cup Junior, you have to submit by May 12. Later on, I'm going to show you what's the timeline on how you can definitely plan your journey in uh, attending the Imagine Cup Junior. Next slide, please. Like I said, uh, uh, the, uh, today is our launch, March 26 of the Imagine Cup Junior 2022 uh, for the Philippines edition. And during the first starting on starting today until April or May 11, we'll be setting up office hours. We'll be setting up mentoring sessions, booth camps on how you can definitely create or create or build your solutions or uh, create your idea to have it to conquer the stage of the Imagine Cup Junior competition. And by May 12, it is the deadline of the Imagine Cup Junior 2022. Next slide, please. And uh, through these uh, boot camp, uh, we'll be sharing with you the six Imagine Cup les lessons. So for these lessons, this, this will be talk, uh, dig deeper later on by our learning partner from Hackdiv uh, to talk about on how you can plan your ideas, how you can execute it, and how you can definitely uh, translate it to a PowerPoint and definitely eventually submit it to the Imagine Cup Junior competition. Next slide, please. Again, you've been wondering, like I said earlier, this year's Imagine Cup is focused on AI. And um, why AI? It's because uh, there has been a lot of innovations on in artificial intelligence, and you'll be able to see a lot of, uh, we've been seeing applications where you can uh, take a selfie and definitely uh, Determine if you're your with regards to your gender, your age, your expression, uh, those type of solutions that you can definitely create with uh, with AI on uh, Microsoft. So next slide, please. Yeah, and like I said, we have as well. Uh, we've invited a speaker to talk about AI for good. I won't. Uh, I won't uh, explain it further, but later on to. To know more about it, stay tuned because uh, we have someone that to talk about this. And this year's Imagine Cup Junior will be focusing on different categories. So if you have any AI for AI for Earth or humanitarian action, could be AI for accessibility or AI for cultural heritage and even for AI for health. So those five categories, you can definitely create your idea. So right now, is you can definitely think of what I what solution or what idea can I definitely uh, create for this type of category? So like for example, AI for health, uh, since we do have we are in, currently in the pandemic, you can definitely uh, think of a solution on how we can integrate artificial intelligence for health, right? So that's an example. And later on, uh, it will be uh, we will be discussing more about the AI for good categories. Next slide, please. And um, AI is actually very uh, important nowadays because there's a lot of main, major changes in the world of work and schools. And right now, Microsoft can is seeking to help, uh, seeking to support different individuals to thrive in this world now. And it's very important of how the AI is helping us in our everyday lives. So as you can see on the slide, there's about the skills. It's very important to have the skills for uh, artificial intelligence. Next slide, please. Yeah, and through this program, we'll be uh, sharing some support. Definitely, we're going to support your teachers, the educators, and even your mentors for all of the resources that we that you can definitely help on how you can get started to join this Imagine Cup Junior. And eventually, 
mentor your students to join this competition. Next slide. And you may be thinking, is it just for uh, techie students? No, as long as you are passionate uh, when it comes to uh, what you're doing about different technology and you're age 13 to 18, you can definitely join this Imagine Cup Junior 2022. So next slide. And you can definitely through this program, you can get to connect with different students across the Philippines and even across the world uh, for you to be able to share your ideas, share your expertise and share your uh, experience on joining the Imagine Golf Junior. Next slide. And that's it. I'm looking forward to all of our participants to join the Imagine Cup Junior 2022. And I'm looking forward to your innovative ideas that can definitely create an impact in the community. Once again, I'm Ian De Torres and have a great day ahead, everyone. All right, so thank you so much, Ian. I'm, I'm actually curious on what are some of the most amazing ideas that you've heard, but then, you know, we wanted to actually leave it to our students to think of their own ideas, right? Now, it's it all starts with ideas, no money. That's why I can't wait for this to happen as well, right? And also, this event is very nice because we get the chance to correct or be more enlightened about the wrong connotations about AI because AI is all about making human lives and daily tasks more bearable and actually, you know, to help us with it. And I can't wait to hear our speakers regarding that. Now, up next, here to let us know more about Microsoft's action plan of providing technology and resources to organizations for their way towards the digital transformation, more commonly known as Microsoft's AI for good. Let us all welcome the Startups Program Lead of Microsoft Philippines, Georgia Martellino. Hi, Georgia. And good morning, everyone. So again, my name is Georgia, and I'm the startups lead for Microsoft Philippines. So first, of, first and foremost, thanks so much for joining us on a Saturday. I know you must be really tired from a long week, but I promise this is really going to be worth your while. So let me get into a little bit about Microsoft's um, AI for Good program, right? So uh, earlier, Ian showed you the different categories, and I'm happy to share with you some examples. But first, why don't we simplify things, right? Um, so first and foremost, uh, what is AI? <laughs> so AI, uh, basically, it, refer, it refers to like a broad uh, range of technologies that can first and foremost perceive um, images and sounds. And then from there, um, the, um, the machine or the technology is able to better learn um, the different patterns and behaviors. And after learning uh, and analyzing these different patterns and behaviors, um, it's able to then um, reason or give recommendations based on the patterns that it has observed. Um, so I know that still sounds quite uh, broad in a sense, and it's still quite um, abstract, but that's the thing about AI, right? I think it's actually um, one of the least um, understood technologies um, only because of the fact that it isn't um, something that you can really box or concretize or define. Um, you can't touch it and you can't see it. So today what I'm going to be sharing with you are different scenarios uh, on AI and how you can apply that. So maybe just to simplify what I shared, think about it this way. Uh, I'm sure there are some of you that are fans of dogs or maybe even have dogs of your own. Um, so it takes a while to train your dog, right? I personally, I have a dog and it's it can be a pain, especially when they, um, you know, do number one and their number two in places where they're not supposed to, when they're still teething. Um, but eventually, as you continue training your dog, your dog gets smarter, your dog is able to apply um, all these different tricks that you've taught them. And, you know, think about AI in that same way. So it's getting smarter over time. It's learning these different tricks, uh, which it learns to apply on its own later on. Uh, but maybe as another example, um, something that may also be relatable to some other folks there. I'm sure some of you are Xbox players. Some of you play FIFA on the Xbox. Um, so if you remember, when you're, whenever you're playing um, FIFA, usually you're going up against uh, an opponent, uh, another team, which is computer powered. So this computer powered or uh, 
team is usually AI powered. So as you'll notice, um, the more that you play uh, FIFA, the smarter the team gets, like the taunts that they have, the things that they say, the more that they're, the better that you get, the better your opponent gets as well. So it's also able to kind of um, track your behavior uh, based on uh, the behavior uh, that you have in the game. And from there, um, the machine is able to respond accordingly. Now, taking all of that into consideration, what's really interesting is that in the past, you know, you've seen that uh, we we have had to learn how to use technology. I mean, uh, back in my day, <laughs> although I like to think that we're not so far apart in age, um, I actually had computer classes. And I think uh, now um, there are several computer classes depending on the kind of track that you're in. So more computer classes probably for those in the STEM track. Um, my parents, when they were still studying, they actually didn't have computer class. They only learned to use the computer when they started working. What they did have was typing classes. So imagine just uh, basic typing. They had to study that and then it evolved, became computer classes. Now there are several types of computer classes. So again, we had to learn how to use um, the technology or the machine. But what's interesting is AI is proof that we're living in different times. We're not just learning how to use the machines. Machines are learning or uh, technology is learning how they can better respond um, to us, better respond to our behavior. They're learning from us based on what we do on our daily lives. Now, given all of that, um, you might be wondering then, what is AI for good? So we have all of these conceptual things about what AI is. So why AI? There's so much good that can be done in the world. Well, simply put, at Microsoft, we really believe that technology has the power to change the world, and that's especially true for our AI. So with AI, um, AI is able to amplify human ingenuity. So by being able to, again, understand our patterns, our behavior, different ways of working, it's able to really extend our capabilities. It even acts as like, you know, a support for us, you know, something that um, supplements things that we're not able to do or things, it streamlines things that we might have to do manually. So we want to make AI accessible to everyone, meaning democratizing it, making it available to all students, um, all people, um, all companies, all organizations from all walks of life, regardless of what background you're from, where you studied, regardless of your socioeconomic status. We want this technology to be available to everyone because we truly believe that once it's available to everyone, then this technology can really help improve um, lives today. And it, it allows us to also uh, imagine a tomorrow that's uh, brighter, that's much different, that's really very innovative. And so given all of that, actually, it's uh, the support for AI is really a top down approach. So we have um, support from all from our bosses, um, from those on ground, our engineers. I um, mean, you know, if I may quote, in fact, um, Brad Smith, who is our president, and Harry Shum, who is the uh, vice president for AI and research for Microsoft, you know, they said that ultimately, the question isn't only what computers can do, but it's what computers should do. So again, going back to what I said earlier, you know, in the past, we learned how to use machines, but now machines are learning um, oh, from us and what they can do for us, what they can do better to help improve our lives. And Microsoft really is committed, and I've seen this firsthand myself, um, to really ensuring the responsible development of AI and ensuring that people from all over the world, again, um, will be able to solve problems that they may not have been able to solve in the past through technology. And as our AI continues to be more advanced, or as our technology begins to you know, become more sophisticated, we want to be able to leverage on this to ensure that the quality of life of every single person in the world is improving. And so because of that, we have categorized our AI for good um, into five different um, subcategories, which actually um, Ian shared earlier. Uh, so again, we have five categories. The first is AI for good, uh, AI for accessibility, uh, AI for humanitarian action, AI for cultural heritage, and AI for health. So what you can expect um, in the next few minutes is that I'm going to go through each pillar and give an example just to be able to kind of concretize, right? Again, we want to bring down this really huge idea of AI, bring it back down to earth. But at the same time, I don't want you to feel limited. There's so much to AI. Um, and these are just some examples to help you kind of better visualize what you can do. But don't feel limited to this. Um, the possibilities are endless, you know, as the event title suggests, this is an imagined cup. So feel free to go wild with your imagination. So just as a quick background, um, AI for Good is something that we are seriously investing in at Microsoft, right? So we have invested, we have committed rather, $125 million to be able to empower um, those working in these different sectors so that we can advance um, the different um, technologies that they have and advance the different platforms that could help solve the most pressing problems we're facing today. And so, um, 
with that, um, our technologies are really helping shape the world. Um, and the, the more that we are able to deploy technologies for these different solutions, the smarter our insights become. So we're able to refine and make um, even more intelligent and more useful um, technology for the different pressing problems that we face. So first and foremost, allow me to get into uh, AI for Earth. So AI for Earth is really um, something that's very near and dear to us at Microsoft, um, precisely because uh, of the pressing need for sustainability. So sustainability is a huge deal for us, and we have several fronts uh, when it comes to our sustainability initiatives. And AI for Earth is just um, one example. So in fact, a huge chunk of our investments, about $50 million, um, are actually allotted particularly for AI for Earth. So it really aims to solve um, global environmental challenges through technological innovation. I mean, at, at its heart, that's really what it aims to do. Um, and but still, when whenever we're talking about, um, you know, sustainability or anything to do with the Earth, we realize that there are still so many subcategories under that, right? And that's why within AI for Earth, um, we actually have um, four different focus areas. So the first is agriculture. Why? Simply put, people need to eat. Uh, we need to be able to feed the world um, at the rapid population that we're uh, the rapid population growth that we have we need to ensure that everybody in the world is fed and that people are being able to eat and eat three square meals a day right uh, but at the same time there's also um several challenges that farmers face um as you know uh we become more urban as well um and with climate change abound um there becomes less and less arable land so it uh, becomes difficult for farmers so what we want to do is we want to be able to empower them to be able to um, monitor their crops and the health of their farms in real time so that whatever in um intervention they have as well we know that it's also i'm um, going to be uh, going to have a lower environmental impact because you can have a solution that will allow you to you know produce more crops produce more food but if it also has a negative impact on the environment then that kind of cancels out uh, your initiative Second pillar we have is water. Again, um, like uh, food, we also need water to survive, right? So um, what's interesting is that some studies have found that in the next two decades, um, the demand for fresh water is going to go up, but the supply is going to go down. Again, because there's overpopulation, we have so many environmental problems. So we're going to have um, more and more people looking for water, but we're going to have less and less um, water that we can drink. And this means water that's for consumption, yes, for drinking, but also for agriculture and even water for hygiene. So for simple things like taking a bath or brushing our teeth, we're not going to be able to have enough water for that. And so uh, AI for Earth, specifically the pillar that's focused on water, really aims to help scientists and organizations um, come up with uh, water models that will allow them to help conserve and protect the fresh water that we have all over the world. I'm sorry, by the way, if I'm talking too fast, please just uh, key in a comment or question if you feel that I am. I'm very excited, lots to, lots of ground to cover today. Uh, next is uh, biodiversity. So um, are there animal lovers in here? I'm sure there are some of those who, some of you who love animals. Um, so um, sadly, um, because of um, the world that we're living in today, we're actually facing um, uh, the threat of extinction um, and, and endangerment for different animals. Um, and because of that, we need to be able to provide services that would allow us to ensure that our endangered animals, um, you know, are able to continue living on. Um, so for example, for me, um, this guy is my favorite. Uh, so the sea turtle is my favorite animal. Um, but unfortunately, um, sea turtles are actually endangered already. Um, and because they're endangered, they're actually close to being extinct if we don't take care of them. And so with our AI for Earth focused on biodiversity, we are providing, again, organizations with the solutions to help um, the discovery, the different monitoring, and the protection of, bio, of biodiversity across the planet. Um, without um, without um, our, you know, certain animals, um, the whole food system will change, the whole food chain uh, will change, um, our different ecosystems will change. It will affect all of us, even if you'll say, okay, there's just one animal that goes extinct. One animal or one organism missing from the food chain will change everything and will affect all life on Earth. And lastly, for the last pillar um, of AI for Earth, uh, we have climate change, which is probably um, something that's the most relatable to us being that we do live in a tropical country that's often ravaged by storms. The Philippines has an average of about 20 um, super typhoons in a year. So uh, it's really important for us to be able to mitigate climate change. So with AI for Earth, um, focused on climate change in particular, we aim to, you know, 
kind of help mitigate the different factors that we're facing um, when it comes to climate change. So this could be, again, extreme weather events, such as super typhoons and hurricanes, rising sea levels, um, increasing global temperatures, which we're probably feeling, especially now that it's summer already. So AI can really help provide um, teams and organizations with the means to kind of um, predict um, the changes in the environment accordingly, so that we can make interventions accordingly as well. Now, just to give a quick example of what AI for Earth looks like, what some intervention looks like. So again, let me go back to our extinct, uh, the, the possibilities of animals getting extinct. So we work together with an organization called iNaturalist. Um, so iNaturalist is actually an app that you can download um, to be able to take photos of um, different species all across the world. Now, why is this important? Um, initially, um, about 38% of species on Earth, I believe, um, could uh, become extinct by the end of the century. Um, so for us to be able to mitigate that, um, you'd have to deploy different naturalists, specialists, and scientists all over the world to document the behavior and life of our different um, animals, different endangered species. And first and foremost, that's a little too expensive. Um, second, it's not practical. Um, it's going to be um, very time consuming. And third, um, you know, for, for it's not that efficient. So for us to be able to mitigate that kind of um, that kind of problem and to provide for that kind of need, uh, we came up, we worked together with the app um, iNaturalist. So iNaturalist is actually a, a partnership between the Academy of Sciences as well as the National Geographic Society. And what it does is using your phone, you can just take a photo of a different um, species using the iNaturalist app. And the AI um, that's um, embedded into the app will allow you to I will tell you which photo is the which animal is depicted in the photo, and from there, this also provides um, different naturalists from all over from all over the world to see um, these different animals. So they're able to get that data in real time um, at very minimal cost, with um, people from all over the world being able to help them. So in that way, we're also able to mitigate um, that risk of endangerment through something as simple as a mobile app. Who knew that a mobile app could be so powerful, right? So next, let me move on to our next category. Um, so after AI for Earth, we now have AI for Accessibility. So AI for Accessibility, it's a $25 million commitment from Microsoft to help everyone, including those, or maybe especially those living with disabilities, right? So it's enabling people with disabilities to live normal lives in their daily lives. They um, face a lot of limitations, but we, we hope to be able to address those limitations, to be able to provide them with employment opportunities, uh, and lastly is to be able to help them um, communicate and connect better. So those are the three pillars that we have um, under uh, AI for, for Good. So when talking about employment, it's really um, empowering organizations with the means to have more inclusive hiring or to be able to have technologies that would allow them to address and cater to the needs of those living with disabilities, whether this be a physical disability or um, a learning disability. Second is daily life. Again, um, there are so many people who are focused now on building uh, modern solutions um, for those living with disabilities. They want to make their everyday life um, much easier. Um, these are small uh, menial tasks, which I'll show you later, which sometimes they can have difficulty because of their disabilities. And we want them to live a normal, as normal a life as possible. And technology is allowing us to do that. And again, lastly, right, is communication and connection. So it's really allowing people to communicate easily, regardless of what their limitations are in terms of listening, speaking, or writing. So here's an example that's actually very close um, to the hearts of the people at Microsoft Philippines. So this was our last AI for Accessibility Hackathon, which we conducted uh, in person. So what we did was we invited different teams to come together to solve different accessibility issues that they felt needed to be addressed. So we actually had three winners. So for the third place winner, um, their team name was I, so that's A-E-Y-E. -E. So what they wanted to do is kind of have um, wearable devices, so in particular glasses, um, to be able to help um, those with visual disabilities to improve their presentation skills. So as long as they're able to wear those um, glasses, um, the AI um, that's embedded into the glasses will allow them to assess the emotion of the people in the room so they can adjust accordingly and present better. I mean, I think this is something that's very relatable to all of us. For example, when teachers see that we're bored, they'll probably change up the discussion a little bit. They'll add some games. They'll all of a sudden uh, make a joke. If teachers see that we have like these, this puzzled or confused look on our faces, they'll also slow down maybe, um, entertain more questions, go back to previous discussions that others may not have been able to understand. So imagine being able to give 
um, those with visual, with visual disabilities that same power. You allow, you allow them to connect with audiences at a larger scale um, in a different way and like never before. Our second place winner um, for this competition was called Paylight. Um, so what they wanted to do was provide, again, those who had um, visual impairments um, to be able to easily identify um, what bill they were holding. So imagine um, every day it's so easy for us to um, give bills and pay for small things. Ice cream, um, hot dog in the canteen. Um, but for those with um, visual impairment, sometimes they do have difficulty uh, being able to tell uh, which bill they're using. So by providing them um, with um, this, uh, this small device, they would be able to easily um, uh, delineate between bills. And you know, that, that really makes their everyday life much easier. It really improves the quality of their life. Uh, and then lastly, uh, which you'll see here on screen, um, so this team is called iBrowser. Um, so for those who have um, visual impairments, usually when they go to certain websites, they're not able to see everything. So they would require a screen reader. Unfortunately, there are some websites that are not as friendly to the visually impaired. So it's difficult for them or the screen reader is not always as accurate. Uh, but what iBrowser wanted to do was they formatted a particular browser that has um, voice communication, voice command, um, different keys available, um, all streamlined buttons to be able to make specific websites easier to use for those who have um, visual impairments or visual disabilities. So as you'll see here, they're um, using the iBrowser or, or they're giving a demo of how, it, how it's done. So that's for AI for accessibility. Now let's move on to our next pillar, uh, which is AI for humanitarian action. So AI for humanitarian action, um, it's um, investment that Microsoft makes to really be able to um, focus on the disaster response from all over the, from all over the world, um, refugees, displaced people, human rights, uh, children and women as well. So similar to the other pillars, um, there are sub um, focus areas within um, AI for humanitarian. And again, the first is disaster response to be able to um, to enable um, resiliency um, and the response and recovery programs of those who are um, facing humanitarian um, emergencies such as uh, storms, earthquakes, and fires, for example. There's also that for the needs of women and children. So it really helps ensure the safety and well-being of children. So, for example, in uh, one country, um, there was a um, like a social services agency uh, that managed the case of children and women. However, the process took so long and there were so many women and children that needed assistance. They couldn't all be catered to because the process was that they would first have an intake interview, meet with a lawyer, and then later on this data would be written down um, manually, like by hand, um, on a form. And then it would be studied and then um, they would help pursue the case. Um, with AI, what they were able to do is come up with a technology that allowed them to read the forms. Um, and then the data from the forms were then transferred uh, into an Excel sheet that allowed them to easily access data from anywhere in the world. So remotely, they were able to do it as well, and it really streamlined and um, hastened the process. Uh, there's also for refugees and displaced people. So again, um, in areas where there's conflict, armed conflict, um, war, um, we provide um, certain AI um, technologies that allow the, the recovery of the refugees and displaced people. Lastly, is for human rights, um, which allows us to accelerate breakthroughs um, to be able to help monitor, detect, um, and really prevent human rights abuses. Now, this next example is also something that's localized, happened here in the Philippines. So this is for our uh, AI for uh, humanitarian actions, particularly those who were displaced. So um, maybe some of you remember in the news a couple of years ago, about five or six years ago, I believe, um, there was armed conflict in the area of Marawi in the Mindanao region. So because of this, uh, many of them had become displaced and they had to leave their hometowns, had to evacuate. Um, but one silver lining was that um, many donors came in, many wanted to give aid and wanted to support the communities that were displaced. However, um, whenever you're talking to um, these big donors, right, they usually talk to a non-government agency that allows them to help track the donations. What was difficult about it was that um, because of the displacement, many of them actually didn't have documentation. Many of them didn't have birth certificates. They didn't have licenses, any government ID to validate their identification. So once that's missing, it becomes difficult for them to track and receive aid. How can they really validate that you haven't received aid before or that you have 
you have already received aid it became difficult. So what happened was that Microsoft together with Save the Children and, a, and our partner called um, Aid Tech, we worked together on this like digital ID or digital wallet. So we provided people with a with like a card, think of like a card, um, wherein the aid was loaded. At the same time, that aid, it wasn't just a wallet, it also acted as their ID. So whenever they would get aid, um, that ID allowed them to be um become identifiable. So more than just providing them with the means to receive aid, we are actually able to really provide them with um, you know, the right to a name. So they were able to become identifiable again, and that made it easier for them. Um, to receive aid and to become traceable, allowing the government to have more accountability over those who are displaced. And uh, next, uh, let me move on to our next category, which is AI for cultural heritage. So cultural heritage are really, we want to be able to empower uh, communities um, to preserve um, historical places, landmarks, artifacts, and people. So we're working together with different organizations to ensure that AI is able to make the most out of these um, current resources and preserve them and maybe even enrich them. So like as you'll see in this photo, for example, they're able to um, see this particular site even without being there. They're able to really experience it through um, VR and other technologies. So that's what we aim to do with our AI for cultural heritage. So like our other pillars, of course, our AI for cultural heritage has different focus areas. First is people. So you want to be able to celebrate those people who have made contributions through history, especially women. Um, more often than not, women, um, whenever they're making technological or scientific um, discoveries or contributions, sometimes they can be forgotten and only men are remembered. So as a way to be able to democratize um, their contributions and to be able to really give recognition to, to the contributions that women have had across um, several industries, we have that focus on um, really celebrating their accomplishments and achievements. Um, there's also for places, so similar to what you saw earlier, so we use digital tools to be able to preserve important um, landmarks. It's also being able to bring landmarks much closer to people uh, through the use of AI and other technologies. Um, there's also languages, so we do engage with communities um, all around the world to be able to preserve um, languages, especially those um, that not many people speak anymore. Um, and there's also for historical artifacts. Um, we create ways um, for collections and archives to be more easily accessed and enjoyed. So maybe some of you have already experienced this once you've traveled to other countries or maybe even in the museums here locally. You'll see that for you to be able to really enjoy uh, particular artifacts, you can just either scan something, you can view it through VR glasses, you can watch it through a screen. So you don't necessarily have to touch the sensitive artifact anymore, but you're able to enjoy it and really experience it still for yourself. Now, one really cool example for this is that we partnered with um, the Nobel Prize um, organization. So you might want to check out the link here. So it's aka.ms slash AAGF47H. So what they did was, again, if you remember earlier, one of the focus areas for um, AI for humanitarian action is being able to give recognition to those who have been forgotten, especially women. You want to be able to celebrate their contribution. So what this did was it matches you actually with um, um, different laureates. So you can match a laureate. So once you go to the website, you can click the match with the laureate um, um, button. And from there, it'll ask you, for example, what are your interests? Um, what are your advocacies? Uh, who inspires you? So it seems like very high level questions, um, but it's nice in that sense because it also humanizes um, our different laureates, right? So you're able to better see um, what they were able to contribute in society before. And these are all um, female laureates, by the way. So it allows us to really give recognition and celebrate those voices who may we may have missed out on in the past. So that's um, our AI for humanitarian action. Next is AI for health. Um, so AI for health is really an investment um, for us, especially within the next five years, to empower different researchers and organizations to really advance the health sector, especially for um, the community. Uh, the, particular um, you know, landscape that we're living in today. It's really, really important. And there are also several um, focus areas when it comes to AI for health. So um, first is the quest for discovery. We want to be able to accelerate medical research and really um, be able to advance the prevention, diagnosis and treatment um, of different diseases, right? Um, we also have global health insights. So we're also increasing our shared understanding of morality and um, longevity um, to be able to protect against a global health crisis. So again, really interpreting this data and what it means 
and what it could mean for humanity at large in the years to come, right? There's also health um, equity, of course, by providing or improving rather the access to care, especially for the underserved populations. So one uh, example of this as well um, is uh, iris. So um, diabetic um, retinopathy, actually, it's one of the leading causes of blindness in the world. So iris, this um, cool machine over here, as you can see, it's attached to a phone. Um, it uses a portable camera to be able to bring eye exams um, to patients that need them. So they use um, AI to be able to process the image of the eye um, so that um, it's a more precise and immediate detection of um, blindness. And it can help prevent blindness, actually, um, especially um, for those who, who have diabetes and are at risk of blindness. Now, um, so again, as I mentioned, um, there are these five different topics, right? And I wanted to give you some examples so that we can kind of bring back down the idea of um, AI. So it's not just a big idea, just you have a more concrete idea of what AI looks like. But again, I don't want you to feel limited to this. But since most of you here are students and teachers, you might be wondering um, what are the qualifications for you to be able to implement an AI for good um, initiative or intervention, right? Um, to be honest, it's not uh, it's quite simple. It's not that difficult. First and foremost, you need empathy. You need to be able to understand what's really human about the solution, right? Um, I didn't go into the technical or the specific details of the technology that we use. I told you the intervention and why it was important. And that's the most important thing when you're um, coming up with an intervention, especially under AI for Good. You have to understand what is this all about? Why do we need to solve it? Why is it relevant? What's the story all about? By being able to have that clear idea, that clear story, it's easier to kind of identify your roadmap and set, set point A to point B so you know what to do next. Second is that you need a little, uh, you need a problem to solve, sorry. Uh, again, AI for Good is all about solving problems that impact society the most. You don't need to solve all of the world's problems, but as long as you know what problems mean most to you, what problems you know you can solve, what problems are relevant to you and your community, that's good enough as long as you have that um, that, that resolve that you want to solve this problem. That's enough by being able to identify. Sometimes it's difficult to even pinpoint um, the problems. If you'll remember in some of the examples that I showed, um, the problems are actually quite specific. We don't even realize that, yes, that, that is a problem. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that um, we were facing this kind of problem, um, that the turtles were endangered, for example, or that um, those um, availing of social services had a hard time um, being able to meet with lawyers. By being able to kind of um, see the larger picture and see what problem you're able to solve, you're already um, halfway through what you need really. And lastly, um, for you to be able to implement such a, uh, an intervention, all you need is a little imagination. Imagination, as our friend SpongeBob mentioned. So also as the name of our event today suggests, all you need is a little bit of imagination. Um, so to wrap up, I'd like to share one last quote. Um, so our CEO Satya Nadella said, uh, what was true then and what is true now is that we create technology so others can create more technology. So technology is rapidly changing the world. Whatever you will build on, whatever idea you have, it's really going to set the pace of where we're going to be tomorrow. Um, so more than just making an impact today, your, your technology is also going to, to lay the groundwork and make an impact for tomorrow. So thank you very much, and I wish you all a productive Imagine Cup uh, junior session ahead. Have a great morning, everyone. All right. Wow, that's really a lot of grounds for you to cover, Georgia. And also, I think I also speak fast when I'm excited about something, so I can <laughs> definitely relate to that. And also, I really liked it when you said, um, back in my days, right? <laughs> because also back in my days, more than 10 years ago when I was taking my computer classes, everyone was so overwhelmed and new to coding. Right. And now, even for those who are not taking computer or IT courses, they're already learning on how to code, which is amazing, mind blowing. And also it's a proof that everyone is adapting to today's technology. So thank you so much, Georgia. Now to let us get a first hand experience 
of what we can expect in this awesome challenge and learning experience, may I call on the founder and CEO of Hactive Collab Incorporated, Paul Suleiman. Hi, Paul. Hello. Hi, Princess. Good morning. How are you? Yeah. Good morning to you. All right. So, yeah, I think I'm ready to like, uh, uh, you know, tour you to what's going to happen in our lessons in ICJ 2022. So thank you again, uh, Princess and the whole Microsoft team for inviting us to like uh, present uh, the Imagine Cup Junior 2022 lessons. So I'm Paul Suleiman. I'm a Microsoft Valuable Professional for Business Application uh, here in the Philippines. And I help the community here in the Philippines uh, for us to be able to um, make uh, business application easier to understand uh, by like, you know, infusing democratized technologies like AI, uh, blockchain and all other stuff like app, app development in the uh, Microsoft business, uh, business applications ecosystem. So next slide, please. All right. So. Um, as mentioned by Ian a while ago, so we will be discussing the sixth lesson for the Imagine Cup Junior session. So um, I think Georgia was able to, you know, uh, describe what is AI for good. So we will be like, you know, um, um, in a way discussing a deep um, explanation of uh, what is AI and what is the basics of AI in this uh, session. All right, so we're going to start um by you know presenting lesson one next slide please all right so our lesson one is of course forming your team and choosing a problem so um i always you know describe a uh, team uh if you're you know a dc fan or a marvel fan um in dc we have justice league in marvel we have the avengers so um picking a team in a specific you know a hackathon or you know a, a group activity is very important. Um, specifically, if you're planning to create a company, so I have four startups and those are four startups uh, that is really, you know, into like, um, you know, group thinking, uh, uh, creating new technology, etc. So I always really pick the best in, in you know, in, in the industry for me to be able to, um, let's say, think or or create more or or you know or produce more output right in in, in my specific company but I, I also like you know um um train people right uh, we're using our of course strengths and weaknesses right so in forming a team like every you know marvel character they they have their own strengths and weaknesses right so it's it's going to be like that in terms of forming team so the goal here is, you know, in lesson one is to bring um, um, one to six people, but I encourage you to do like um, like at least four to six. So for you to be able to have this um, in a way um, easy experience in terms of creating and, and finding a problem or creating a solution because later on each individual should have its own, you know, um, assigned task, right? Um, in, in this specific uh, session or, or or activity. So as a team, as I mentioned, individual strength, you need to you need to discuss that and determine how you want to work together across the next five lessons. All right, next slide, please. So in forming a team, as I mentioned, I would like to pick the best and of course, uh, you know, uh, use each other's strengths for us to be able to really produce a good solution. So you need to pick right or, or or ask the team members that want to join your team what what is their superpower let's say for example uh i'm creative like I, I like producing ideas so maybe i can like you know plan and to really think what should be the solution for this particular problem i'm artistic maybe i can create the powerpoint deck or the powerpoint slide i'm a fast learner maybe i can do research Right. And, uh, you know, in terms of like using AI or solving problems with AI, there's a lot of, you know, uh, in a way, if you really want uh, your solution to be remarkable, you need to do a lot of research. So 
And if I'm if I'm if I'm uh, passionate with technology co coding and gaming, I might be the one who's like you know thinking how to build a specific solution or an application. I'm a good writer. I'll do the write ups in the PowerPoint, meaning the description, the wordings, etc. And if you're uh, good at, lead, at leading people, maybe you're gonna be the one who's who's gonna manage the project in in the IR, in IRL. We call that IRL in real life. Um, um, there is like a job that we call project manager. So maybe if you like, you know, is um, have a talent or, you know, um, in a way have an interest on in talking to a lot of people, encouraging them to do their work and tasks, maybe you, you, you'll be the project manager of the group. And if you love getting things done, it's still the same. If you're the project manager, you need to ask your team, uh, assign them a task, and of course, uh, in a way, uh, um, um, you know, assign also a deadline, but um, because this is like just, you know, we need to have fun. Don't be, you know, too strict about the deadline, etc. And if you're good at solving problems, maybe you're the one who can create the process flow, etc. And, you know, something else. But um, we're just we're just showing here that, you know, whatever superpower you have, uh, you need to work as a team and, you know, balance out all the strengths and weaknesses. All right. Next slide, please. All right, so choosing a problem. As I mentioned in lesson one, we're going to be forming your team and choosing a problem. So for like um, for like um, uh, like the forming the official team, don't worry. I think Ian mentioned already the schedule, so we will be having our office hours to guide you on how to really form a team. So that's going to be next week. And um, I'll go to choosing a problem. So choosing a problem is more of like solving a particular, you know, things that is um, you know, um, um, if you want to have an impact or a dent in the world, uh, you need to, to choose a particular problem that that is really, you know, um, in a way deep that you can solve. If you solve that specific problem, there, there will be a remarkable result. But that if, um, you know, you're 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 a superhero or something, but here in ICJ, uh, or Imagine Cup Junior, we want to be really realistic in terms of building solution. And I myself, I have four startups company without uh, choosing a right problem or, or irritation of my customer or, um, you know, or if in the school, right, um, if, if you have a specific issue and I think you know what is your specific issue, it's something like that. So the, the choosing a problem should not be general but it should be focused. Let's say, for example, the picture here um, has, you know, let's say, has an issue with in terms of garbage or traffic or, of course, um, accessibility. So this, uh, spe this specific problems that you're seeing now in the screen is like a, 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 um, a, a problem that can be, you know, uh, have a straightforward solution. For example, if I'm going to choose um, accessibility, I think George has discussed already um, other like, you know, solution that was built for, for accessibility. And AI uh, has a lot of, you know, um, in a way the AI platform of Microsoft itself has a lot to offer in terms of like solving a solution for, or creating a solution for accessibility. Let's say for example, uh, we call it the face API. If this particular application is can let, let's say a particular person, so it can detect face and that uh, that that specific app can tell let's say a blind person that uh, or visual visually impaired person that this person is her mom or his mom, something like that. So you can do that by just doing facial recognition using face API on, on Microsoft Azure. So there's a lot of things that you know you can think about, but we were encouraging you if you choose a problem or a challenge to be solved, it needs to be super specific and not so general. All right, next slide, please. All right, so um, of course, Again, as I mentioned on the office hours and the boot camps, we will be, you know, helping you to identify the problem and check if that problem is really good. <laughs> it's a good problem, but uh, let's start by taking a look at environmental sustainability challenge. With it. This, this is what I'm talking about. It's very specific challenge or problem, and it needs to be like that. So may I ask the team to play the video for this? Thank you. Imagine if we had a planetary computer that could tell us exactly what we needed to do to protect planet Earth. 
A system that was capable of providing us information about every tree, every species, all of our natural resources. How could we use all of that data to build a better world? True innovation hinges on our ability to see things differently. It means breaking boundaries and looking between the lines in an effort to solve some of the world's toughest challenges. Planetary scale innovation is needed now more than ever. Because if we truly care about each other, then we have got to care about this planet that we all call home. And that is something that we have been failing at for far too long. Consider this. In the time since I've been alive, the human population has almost doubled. Our species now uses more than 70% of all land on Earth to provide our food, our fiber, our water, minerals, and our energy. And these activities are fundamentally transforming the natural systems we all depend on. Species are going extinct tens to hundreds of times faster than they have before. And we're changing our climate systems in ways that could have catastrophic impacts. No matter how you view it, we're now facing one of the most existential challenges our species has ever had to think about. We have to somehow figure out how to mitigate and adapt to rapidly changing climates, ensure resilient water supplies, sustainably feed a human population rapidly growing to 10 billion, all while stemming a global and catastrophic loss of biodiversity. We may know how fast species are going extinct, but we don't actually know how many species there are or how many trees there are. We're facing our last real opportunity to ask ourselves the most fundamental of questions. How are we gonna solve these planetary scale challenges. And so as a citizen, as a scientist, and as Microsoft's chief environmental officer, I think the most important question to ask is not just what technology should be built, but how technology should actually be used. We're talking about a wide range of environmental concerns. These represent the world's biggest data challenges, the world's biggest compute challenges, and the world's biggest algorithmic challenges. And that's why we need solutions, like artificial intelligence, that are capable of being deployed at a planetary scale. So what is artificial intelligence and how can it help us? Well, at its core, AI is just an algorithm that solves for an objective function. It solves a problem. And the biggest problem we need to solve right now is how we as humans can continue to grow and prosper without destroying the very ecosystems that we all depend on. So while we're a long way from having all the answers, what I can tell you is that our vision for building a better future is already well underway. Using AI and the power of cloud computing, we can now convert what used to be considered inconceivable amounts of data about Earth's natural systems into actionable insights and information. And that intersection is where our greatest innovations are occurring. Most of our computer scientists know a whole lot about technology, but just a little about the environment. Our partners, though, know a whole lot about the environment, but aren't so deep on technology. It's that potential of people and technology coming together that inspired us to create AI for Earth, a platform that provides cloud computing, open source tools, and AI support to individuals and organizations striving to solve environmental and sustainability challenges, to spark people's curiosity and accelerate their work. Take, for example, the Chesapeake Bay Conservancy, a small nonprofit with a mandate to protect one of the most important watersheds in the United States. In order to do that, though, they and their partners needed to create a high resolution map of where all the forests, fields, urban areas and waterways actually were. They were able to do that, but it took them well over a year and a million dollars to complete the job. And by the time they were done, the landscape had already changed and the map was out of date. Through a partnership with AI for Earth, they were able to rebuild that 64,000 square mile map 
for a fraction of the cost in a fraction of the time. And this is just one of hundreds of projects that AI for Earth is empowering in areas like agriculture, water, biodiversity, and climate change with organizations all around the world. Take Wild Me. They're using computer vision and machine learning to convert wildlife photographs and videos into data that can be used to protect species on the verge of extinction. And then we have Ag Analytics, which combines farm data with machine learning to help farmers improve the sustainability of their practices while also maximizing their yields. And these are just a few examples of what's possible when people are empowered to scale their ideas and their right. solutions. One of the most... Sorry, I needed to cut the video because it's going to be discussed also in our office hour session. But, you know, guys, um, see, I, I was, you know, really like uh, uh, telling you a while ago about very specific uh, problem and very specific solution. You see how, uh, you know, um, it's being done in, in terms of like solution for food, uh, solution for, you know, water supply or water system and also, you know, detecting uh, wild animals, um, you know, um, um, state or, or how are, 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 are they, you know, living in the forest, etc. So this specific solutions or problem can be also, you know, have a specific solution that we can be, you know, creating um, and, and ideating, right? Uh, for us to be able to like have a, even a small win in terms of like, um, um, in a way, creating small solution for that. The, the, good, the, the good thing about, you know, Microsoft uh, AI is um, it's ready to do that. And you have the platform already for you to be able to, you know, get the data, uh, get again machine learning etc for you to be able to create a solution that can be done quickly all right so i think the ai for good category categories was uh you know um discussed already a while ago but let me just you know um in a way reiterate it so microsoft is focusing on making a difference in the world with ai in these five categories which are you know ai for earth which is for environment ai for cultural heritage which is you know preserving this you know, um, of course, cultural, let's say, building or something that can, you know, uh, the reason for that is, of course, for us to be able to, like, um, um, in a way, pass this particular uh, cultural uh, building to our future generation so they can see it, right? AI for accessibility, helping this, uh, you know, um, person with this ability on how they can, you know, access or live a normal life, uh, and then and mobility for them to be able to move or to travel um, the let's say the road without uh, being hassled, right? So this this is for um, AI for accessibility, then AI for humanitarian action. So there are many you know nonprofit organization that's doing humanitarian action like helping you know uh, um, um, flood victims or or like donating to a specific group. Uh, for them to be able to help those, uh, let's say, people in Tondo, Manila, something that I'm a member also of JCI Manila, which is a non-government organization that helps uh, um, every aspect of, you know, um, um, humanity, um, um, in terms of like Philippines, for us to, to be able to like um, have a, an impact to to a focus area that we want. So that's humanitarian action. And AI for health, of course, uh, there's a lot of you know devices already that are available and it's AI driven for you to be able to predict and to like, you know, we yeah, are not only to, to be reactive in terms of diagnosis, but also to predict um, whatever like, you know, uh, disease can, can happen like 10 years uh, from now or, or 10 years uh, or five years after each other. So these are like, you know, uh, the things that AI can do for us. And um, this category, are uh, very, again, it's very specific. You need to pick on it, uh, on this on this category. Uh, you, need, you need to pick from this so you will be able to like, you know, really have a specific ideation and uh, problem solving activities when you are already in the bootcamp or in the sessions. Next slide, please. All right. So let so lesson one is really you know is really long because it, it needed to like you know intro uh, 
the gist of the pool Imagine Cup Junior, which is really, you know, finding a problem, forming your team, and really um, ideating on specific solution that you need to have. So I'll go with lesson two. So there will be an office hours, as I, as I mentioned. So next slide, please. But I'm going to like tackle a glimpse of this one. So what is human intelligence? Next slide, please. All right. So human intelligence is made up of, of course, reasoning, our logic, right? Our, our uh, you know, um, we our, our, our brain evolved to be logical, right? Since um, since we have this reptilian, reptilian kind of evolution uh, for us to be able to survive, then the reasoning um, intelligence was made up or evolved, right? So human thinking about things. So uh, we, we need to reason out why we need to leave, why we need shelter, why we need food. It's for survival. And of course, um, human intelligence made up of learning. Um, in fact, um, evolution, you know, showed us how how human learned from like Stone Age going to, you know, uh, Ask Day, like we're, we're using tools. It's, it's very different. And in fact, we're transitioning into becoming a digital species already. And um, human is also, human intelligence made up of problem solving. Again, reasoning and problem solving are, you know, um, in a way connected to each other since there's a lot of, you know, problem before that uh, this, uh, let's say a group of, of like tribal, uh, you know, or, or a tribe in Africa are, are, are let's say, having malaria, etc. So because of those conditions, um, um, human intelligence is really like, you know, um, have this particular in a way, um, um, kind of thinking to do problem solving. It's natural to us because we, we are evolving and solving those problems from, from, you know, 2,000, 5,000 years ago. We have the perception, which is humans being able to see or hear or touch or feel. And linguistic intelligence, um, like speaking, like understanding each other. In fact, even the Bible, like in Tower of Babel, has that specific, you know, story for us to be able to understand um, how language works, right? So this are human intelligence. And in fact, I think there's a lot more, you know, um, that, that uh, we're not discuss here, but um, the, 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 the thing is, uh, in terms of AI, which I'm going to be tackling on my next slide, so we understand already human intelligence. So next slide, please. All right. So AI is quite simply an attempt to make a computer or a robot or other piece of technology think to do something like human. All right. All right. So this is a fact. So AI cannot really do or learn on its own, all right? So meaning, um, of course, there are like, we call it the neural network or the deep learning, etc. So I'm not going to go through that. But, you know, um, let's say, for example, you're in your school, right? So um, usually um, for you to be able to, to get a specific, you know, um, let's say, or, or to, to have a perfect exam or to get a good grades, you know, you need to review and you need to know what is right or wrong in terms of answering this question. So um, I want to use that analogy in terms of AI. So technically, AI, we're training AI what is right or wrong, all right? But of course, there's, there's a lot of formulation, not only right or wrong. But you guys should understand that whatever we feed, uh, to the AI or to the machine learning model, it will be the right or wrong of the AI. Let's say, for example, as I, as we mentioned about human intelligence, let's say reasoning. So if uh, I create, let's say, an AI reviewer, I want to have my own AI that will review me every, every exam, right? So I will feed my AI uh, what is right or wrong, meaning, let's say, uh, my past exam. Two years ago, I had an exam. Oh, sorry. Now, last quarter, I had an exam. So Let's say, for example, I have five questions and I, I, uh, it's for science. So let's say question number one, the answer there is letter A. Question, so B, C, and D are wrong. And question number two, the answer there is letter B. Then A, uh, C, D is wrong or are wrong. Something like that. So um, I'll create a, a, an AI model that will really detect or, or like, you know, um, I'll train that for, for it to be able to learn what is right or wrong. So 
a simple explanation. You just feed AI what is right or wrong. And if you want to discuss like, you know, X and Y axis, the regression testing, etc. that we're currently doing. In fact, I'm really, you know, um, in a way learning a lot of things in, in AI and democratized technology of Microsoft. Like because I'm a Microsoft MVP, I really like, you know, um, challenge myself to 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 you know a symbi have a symbiosis with the AI since it's easy now for you to be able to create your own machine learning model. You don't need to be a scientist to like or or uh, like uh, an engineer to create your own robot or AI today. So that's it. It's quite it, it, AI is quite uh, you know simply just um, let's think of it. You're just training your AI or you're just um, letting your AI know what is wrong or right on the specific problem or subject. Next slide, please. All right, so that's lesson number two. So in lesson number three, um, we're going to be discussing becoming a team of AI investor, inventor, sorry. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so gold. Uh, the goal of lesson number three that we're going to be discussing on our next sessions, uh, you need to attend. So. Uh, for you to be able to really have a deep understanding about this specific lesson. Um, goal is start inventing your AI concept to the solution that you identify in lesson one. So again, if you have an idea already, then it's fine to like imagine in a way and be sure to use APIs that you learned about in lesson two. We're going to be discussing that on our office hours, but I want you to see this video for you to be able to understand how to be an AI inventor. Play the video, please. Many people assume artificial intelligence is only being developed by scientists and engineers. But actually, we need everyone working on AI, including you. We need philosophers to engage with the ethics of AI. We need creative people to come up with new ways of how it can be used. We need people who are great illustrators and writers to make engaging with AI fun and easy. AI inventors are not just scientists and engineers. Despite inventors coming from many different fields, they do have one thing in common. They solve problems. An inventor will look around and see a challenge that frustrates them, and then they will solve that challenge. Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, is famous for trying to solve the problem of seeing in the dark and he tried 10,000 different ways to solve that problem before he came up with what we now call a light bulb. So, it sounds simple, but it's an important point. Identify a problem and then invent a solution to that particular problem. Another thing common with inventors is that they aren't the second people to come up with the idea, they're the first. To prove this, you might have heard of Thomas Edison, who we just mentioned, but you've probably never heard of the second person to build a light bulb. When you're thinking of your idea, make sure you spend some time checking online to see what other people have already invented to try to solve the same problem you have identified. So in this lesson, don't forget that you can be an inventor and that it's best for you to start with a problem and come up with a new solution to that problem. All right, so that's um, lesson number three. So, um, so again, we encourage you to uh, join us in our on our um, office hours uh, sessions and also boot camp for you to be able to to understand more how to become an AI inventor. So, we're I'm going to lesson four. So making sure your AI is good, ito na. Like this one is very important. So we have, you know, we have this uh, notion of like, uh, like if, if you if you like um, uh, heard the news about Elon Musk saying that AI can destroy us, right? So this is gonna be, so this is gonna be um, um, one good avenue for us to be able to see that, oh, so if AI, Will destroy us why do we need to create ai right so this is ai for good we will be learning here how to create a positive impact all right in terms of ai and ensuring that your ai has a good ethical principle um i i i had a course that 
you know, doing responsibility of AI or responsible creation of AI. So there's a lot of things to, you know, to understand kids, not only, you know, not only like just creating it and done. So in a way, in terms of like uh, when you're in a classroom setting, there are rules and regulation. There are like house rules that um, if you need to like go to the restroom, you need to ask permission from your teacher, something like that. So um, AI is not only like I want to create this particular AI for, for me to be able to help a specific person. You need to also check uh, security. We will be discussing that later because without cybersecurity as well, there, there will be no more. Uh, it's it's hard to create an AI because uh, we have what we call the poisoning. When we say poisoning in the AI world, it the a specific hacker can poison your AI and um, use it uh, as bad, you know, as to 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 do bad rather than to do good. So if you're watching Black Mirror, it's something like this. So that's why we need to uh, make sure that our AI is good. And I'm gonna be going to the next slide for me to be able to like show it. Next slide, please. All right. So why do you think uh, um, are some really great things that technology has brought to the world in recent history? I mean, this is like, uh, uh, like a question that you can reflect later on. And why do you think have been the biggest, most positive part of technology has shifted so far this century? So um, in a way, it's, it's, it's the question of like, um, let's say, for example, blockchain technology, NFT, cryptos, right? So I think for, uh, I mean, for me, this these technologies are really great that it's really, um, you know, shifted us to becoming more digital native or digital species because um, a digital asset now has, has a value already. It's not like, uh, it's like a physical asset that you can, um, you know, store on a blockchain and it will be there forever, right? So these are like, you know, uh, technological advancement that we know and also in terms of AI, uh, you know, in China, their uh, their AI is already, you know, doing their credit scoring, meaning if you're doing a good job, AI can detect that without you even, you know, seeing that because there's a lot of like metrics and data that this Chinese government are getting for you to be able to have a good credit score or, or citizen score. So um, we're going to be discussing that now. But of course, when you do that, what is the impact of that particular technology or solution in terms of um, the, the you, you know, the evolution of the society? It's, it's if the society is going to uh, be um, going to uh, or, or be better. So, of course, there are like some impact also in other group of like, you know, per society as well that will not be beneficial to them if we deploy this such thing. So it's this we we're going to be discussing that on our, you know, office hour lesson more on that. But next slide, please. All right, so I want I want to share this video as well. So for us to be able to understand anticipating and mitigating changes, as I mentioned um, 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 in my uh, super not straightforward statement, but let me repeat that. So if you like create a solution, there will be uh, an impact that can be good, all right? But you need to also consider that uh, creating a solution uh, will also impact other specific group or people that uh, will not produce uh, good, not all, also bad, but at least it will have a negative impact on their side as well. And this video will show us how to anticipate and mitigate changes. Please play team. Thank you. AI has the power to change our world. It could help us tackle diseases, reduce energy consumption, drive our cars around, and educate generations of children. It could remove repetitive jobs from the job market and free up humans to do truly creative things. It has a real chance of helping us lead healthier, happier lives. But there is a chance it's not always perfect. And like with any new technology, there are changes, good and bad, and we have to work hard to mitigate these. For example, whilst cars have allowed us to get around quicker and easier and not have to own a horse, the pollution impacts have been massive. And while we can feed the world now with monocropping, where we just plant one crop in a farm, 
we've seen huge sections of nature destroyed, species becoming extinct, and in recent years, the mystery deaths of bees. When you add AI into the equation, there is even more we need to consider, because AI can move at an incredible speed as our computer power increases, and AI has the potential to impact on human beings if it is not used responsibly. It could mean more people in poverty. It could mean more inequality. It could reduce diversity. It could see huge numbers of people without work. This is a complex issue, and our job now is to make sure our AI is for good and reduce any negative impacts it may have on the world. All right, it's super good. I mean, um, uh, again, as I mentioned, whatever we're feeding to our you know, machine learning model or to our AI, that would be their action. Right, and in the basic computing, like I, I know, you know, guys uh, study this, like the input output and in, or the input process and output, the ECO. In fact, even in in, in major, you know, changes in computing, this ECO or IPO still, you know, uh, applicable. Like this is very basic. I, we you started that since elementary, right? So input meaning whatever you 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 input on your uh, computer, which can be coming from different input devices, which are keyboards, uh, you know, um, touch screens, uh, you know, scanners, etc. And the processing is the microprocessor of our computer or the processor itself, the motherboard. So technically, after your input a specific information, it will, you know, process that information and go to the output, which is our monitor or printer. You no, know, just like a, a, a review. Of, of you know super basic computing so AI is also something like that so whatever you feed to your AI it will um, um, you know process it and as I mentioned it's like teaching your AI right and wrong all right or right or wrong so uh, what will happen there is um, the the negative impact impact okay the negative impact of that particular let's say um, set of data all right is uh, uncontrollable if you will not mitigate that. Meaning, um, let's say, for example, um, in, in, in your classroom, so if there are like, um, if, if you have project, right? So sometimes we delay, right? Meaning we, we want to, even my kids does that, like um, if your submission tomorrow uh, of your project will be tomorrow, then you will do that two days ago or yesterday. So the problem with that, um, activity or action is I might, all right, I might, um, um, you know, if, if I have an emergency, I might not pass my project because I don't have enough preparation to do that. In AI, it's something like that as well. So meaning for you to be able to mitigate a specific, um, in a way, um, um, or, or to prevent disastrous, you know, activity or, or, or happening, you need to really like uh, mitigate it. If I'm gonna use my project analogy, your your if I'm if I'm um you know need if I need to pass the project tomorrow, I need to do the project you know last week, or I need to start doing or you know start uh, building something last week. So same as with AI, we need to prevent that from happening. I mean, if you're gonna feed AI uh you know data, you need to review that you know and be proactive, right? So. You, you don't just feed data to the AI. You need to review it very carefully, um, not even in scientific ma manner, but also checking it if that if this particular input will um, have a negative impact to a specific um, output. Let's say, for example, racism or or not looking at equality or um, not looking at accessibility or uh, doing a hate speech, etc. So you need to think of every data that we need to feed to your AI and being proactive, right? Not like the project deadline analogy, all right? So I'll go to lesson number five, which is cybersecurity. Okay, so hi, how cybersecure do you think you are? Meaning, so there is a site, uh, just one, that come, but I'm not going to flash it because we have office hours. So, um, so do you think that you're secure, right? So, or, or did you like encounter anything that, uh, you know, or, it, um, did you encounter like hacking incident, 
like uh, some other you know school uh, have an issue with 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 their like let's say virtual class um, or digital classroom because or because while they're having their meeting, someone is uh, you know uh, someone was trespassed, right? Or or like uh, turn off all of their uh, mic or do a hate speech inside that virtual class. So um, that's because um, people are not really uh, in a way um, not not really aware, but more of not checking or not really um, you know. Uh, implementing or thinking about the cybersecurity. So this is the issue. Even though you're not yet working, um, you know, a responsible um, usage of your devices is really, um, you know, need, is is needed to be really think of. Meaning, it's not just because you're not browsing anything bad or using, um, you know, installing malware or application in in Play Store that has malware, you're safe. You need to always check every aspect of your devices and not only devices, but also your internet. Do you change your password, you know, monthly? Um, do you have multi-factor authentication, right? So I think you, you have a lot of games on your phone, but how do you ensure that no one is really, you know, know uh, your username and password? So those things are very important. And that's why cybersecurity is also very important in, you know, in the real world scenario, uh, not only in school, but also in big companies uh, that is keeping your money, for example, like banks and other institutions. Next slide, please. All right, so I'm, uh, we're gonna watch. Uh, watch this video for you to be able to have a basic understanding uh, for like cybersecurity. Let's play this game. As long as there have been humans around, there have been some criminals also trying to come up with ways to steal things from others. The term cybersecurity, which can be defined as the efforts we take to stop criminals from stealing things from us through our computers, is a pretty new term though. And it was only a few years ago that the most common cybersecurity threats were viruses attacking your computer or emails from royal families around the world who claimed they had some money for you. Today, however, cybersecurity is a very, very big deal. Trillions of dollars big. And cybercrime is now the fastest growing industry in the world. This is because in the past, Many homes only had one computer in them. Now, your phone is a computer. Your oven and fridge might be too. People have smart pacemakers pumping blood around their body or smart contact lenses in their eyes. They drive their smart cars to work, passing by smart billboards. This idea that there are smart devices everywhere is often referred to as the Internet of Things. And it means that everything that is a computer that is connected to the internet can be hacked. There are cases where a group of hackers worked out how to manipulate electronic road signs used for temporary roadworks. They changed the signs to read, Godzilla attack, turn back. The steering wheel, stereo and brakes of a car can be hacked through a laptop miles away. And a casino can be hacked through its smart fish tank. More seriously, hackers have successfully penetrated nuclear power stations and printers in people's homes, which is a challenge when 3D printers start printing our dinners or our medicine. So a big question you need to ask now is, will criminals be able to hack into your AI? And if they can, what will they be able to do? All right, so you see, um, as you know, uh, the video mentioned that um, because we're everything is connected now, we call it IoT or Internet of Things, or your your watches, uh, your refrigerators, your TVs. So, um, and in terms of AI, since it's also you know most of the AI machine learning you know um, servers are are in the internet, you need to also choose a provider that is secure. Uh, and and have this specific capability for them to be able to like you know really uh, secure the full expect spectrum of of their data centers. Meaning when I say data center, um, because you store 
um, your data to a specific server and location, um, there if if your provider is not that you know um, in a way investing or in, or they they did not build their data center properly, so there are chances that hacker can just go to the server and you know if you're hosting your AI inside that server, they might you know poison your AI, right? Uh, poisoning um, is really a word or, or a jargon in the you know AI space. You can research that or Google it in Bing, <laughs> so you can see why you know it's very important to understand how you know um, poisoning works and how it can uh, really um, compromise a specific AI and act like crazy. Right? If you're familiar with Terminator, it's something like that, or if you're um, uh, familiar with Black Mirror, it's something like that. So if a specific criminal um, has has uh, already the access to your uh, AI model, they can really, um, you know, act, uh, or make your AI act crazy and do bad things. So in a way, um, um, we will be like in, in lesson number five, cybersecurity, which we're going to be um, like uh, doing a session that is deep on this on our office hours, we just need to understand that all of the devices now are connected in the internet and no one is safe unless you really take care and uh, have cyber security uh, in, in, in your you know everyday um, life. OK, so lesson number six, entering a great submission to Imagine Capture. From lesson one to lesson five, we talk about you know forming your team and choosing a problem. Um, you had a, a basic understanding of what AI is all about, and you know how to be an AI invent inventor, um, and then making sure your AI is good, and of course protecting or learning cybersecurity, protecting your AI. So these uh, lessons that we've discussed um, have a goal of really um, creating a solution that. Uh, is not only just to create a solution, but um, thinking of how it will work properly, how it will be secure, and are, is your solution will have a, an impact all right, to your chosen problem. We're going to lesson six now. Uh, next slide, please. So tips for a great idea in submission. Again, as I mentioned, um, think of or imagine of the problem, a very specific problem, please don't be too general. And um, you will understand also if you're focused on a specific problem, uh, research on it, etc. You will understand that this problem can be solved by not only AI, but also, you know, solution that is available already and doesn't need to be reinvented. But um, AI has a lot to offer and I want you to like have a glimpse of uh, this specific uh, idea and how to do the submission. Please play the video. Your goal in this final lesson is to bring together a really great submission and increase your chances of being one of the global winners of Imagine Cup Junior. We have nine tips for you in this lesson and will give you time to improve your idea between each set of three. Tip number one is to make your inner sentence description clear and powerful. On the title page of your submission template, there is a question that asks you to explain your idea in one sentence. This is an important sentence to get right as it is the first thing the judges will look at. Try to include the problem your AI is solving, the data it collects, the container of the AI, and the outcome or decision it creates. Now that is a lot to get into a sentence, but we have an example here. An AI accessed through a website that scans the internet and environmental data to help people to find and book the lowest carbon emission travel option available. Tip number two is to fill out every slide. There are only 10 slides, so make the most of them. If you miss slides or choose not to answer sections like ethics, you will be missing out on valuable points. You are not able to add slides, 
so only the first 10 slides will be looked at. Tip number three, make sure you explain your idea simply. By the time your educator submits your slide deck for you, you are going to know a great deal about the problem you have identified and how you think your AI concept could solve it. But spare a thought for the judges who will be reading thousands of submissions. Make their work easier and help them to rate your submission well by making every slide clear and easy to understand. So, number one, ask yourself why you are including particular pieces of information in your submission. Number two, explain concepts rather than assuming they will understand it immediately. And three, have someone look over your submission before your teacher enters it to see if they understand it. All right, so you will know, um, you know, you will know a lot of uh, um, like, uh, of course, tip and tips and tricks later on. And also we will guide you on how to submit those slides. Uh, we have that on our kit, beginner's kit. Um, um, we will be like also, uh, in a way, handhold you for you to be able to like really have a specific problem, as I mentioned, and a simple solution that is, of course, anchored on an AI solution. And this is what I'm talking about since the start of my talk. It needs to be super specific, a clear and concise, you know, um, problem and the solution that is that can understand easily, not only by the judges, because I'm not, you know, if, if you want to create uh, at least or, or have an impact, right? So uh, don't think that it's it's really a competition, but um, think of it like you're solving a problem here. Right, not only in the Philippines but for the whole world. So that's how you will, you know, um, entice right uh, your mind to think and to really, um, in a way, uh, have a collaboration, right, with these specific people that you currently have on team and producing a good solution rather than focusing on the competition. Right. So be passionate about it. Um, you know, you need to feel like it's going to be solving a lot of issues. Uh, in the real world scenario, if this particular um, solution is, you know, even it's you're not a you're, you're a winner or not, uh, again, this your specific solution can be, you know, seen by judges all around the world and including us. As I mentioned, I'm also startup uh, advocate. I can also check the solution and maybe uh, let's work together in the near future as long as it's clear, concise, and simple, and ex executable. And by the use of AI, uh, you know, you can really present it properly, then it's going to be a good thing. And it's going to, uh, we have a chance of, you know, really winning the competition. All right. All right. I think there's there's a question here. Uh, since cybersecurity is being mentioned, is there any physical 2FA methods other than the usual six uh, digit authenticators? Yes. So um, there's a lot of physical, um, um, you know, devices. Or yeah, that, that is like connected to an NFA, uh, MFA, um, you know, application or algorithm. Uh, let's say in crypto, we got, we have what we call the call wallet. It's a simple authenticator as well that store a public and private key inside of that. And 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 let's say for example, um, you have the U this USB devices, this flash drive that have your um, you know. Um, um, OTP, you can just input that. It's so old school technology, but still very safe because you cannot like uh, open your your let's say or, or type your um uh, your six digit number if you don't have that number or code coming from the flash drive. And um, Azure Authenticator is very good as well. You don't need to type six digit authenticate six digit number or or four digit OTP. You just need to you know uh um. Um, use your device or your mobile or smartphone for you to be able to authenticate this particular, you know, um, action or login uh, from, let's say, of Microsoft 365 or even other application that uses the Azure Authenticator. And it's for general account. It's secured and it can generate. Uh, it can. It, it, ha it has a lot of option on how you will, you know, do the multi-factor authentication. Okay. All right. 
So I think that's that's the only question. So how do you submit your ND to Imagine Cup Junior? I think it will be discussed um, on the next topic. So yeah, I think that ends my session and I'm going to be staying here for a summer question. Thank you. All right, so thank you so much, Paul. Now, you know, lesson five, cybersecurity is really a very dear and close topic to me. I used to work for this industry, and even before that, I worked for an IoT startup as well. And it has always been, cybersecurity has always been a challenge for the internet of things, right? Because one of the things that I've learned is that cyber criminals are constantly innovating themselves as well as we become digitally advanced. So we should be a step ahead of them. And I think this is a very interesting challenge for those who will actually join our junior cop, right? So that I can't wait to see. And yeah, something that I am really waiting for, for you guys. Now, as we move through with our agenda, may I once again remind everyone to not hold back and feel free to share your journey online using our official hashtags hashtag imagine cup junior 2022 and hashtag imagine cup junior ph now before we continue let's all watch this azure kubernetes power bi xamarin how does the developer, IT admin, analyst, or solution architect keep up with all the latest technologies? Microsoft Learn can keep you one step ahead. First off, Microsoft Learn offers free, interactive, hands-on training and is always available at no cost to you. With more than a thousand plus courses and growing, find a wide variety of topics, including Azure, artificial intelligence, business applications, modern workplace, and Windows development. These modules offer a concise, interactive, and friendly way to pick up new skills as you venture into new career paths or start preparing for Microsoft certifications. You can complete most of them in 15 to 60 minutes. All have been translated into a variety of common languages. Want to fill in the big picture? Learning paths guide you through a series of logically connected modules. You can work along the path, gaining experience points and badges as you go. Make your own journey by creating and sharing a custom collection of modules for you and your team and use bookmarks to save your favorites to come back to later. A personalized homepage will always keep you up to date. Learning is hands-on. The Sandbox environment uses real Azure. You are working with real resources in exactly the same manner as you would with your own subscription. When possible, you can choose your preferred platform to learn on. Want more personal instructor-led training? Microsoft Learn can connect you with a variety of qualified learning partners to take your technical skills to the next level. Want to browse through Microsoft Learn to see what it offers? Head to Microsoft.com slash learn and check out your opportunities. We've created a platform to help you learn at the pace of change. Have you ever heard a robot with a Kiwi accent? Probably not, hey? Well, I'm here to tell you that's going to change. See, us New Zealanders are good at a lot of things. But now we're getting good at robots. Well, artificial intelligence, actually. Through Microsoft's Imagine Cup Junior, we're going to be learning about really awesome technologies, then inventing the best robot in the world, or actually the best AI. Imagine Cup Junior Aotearoa for Kiwi high schoolers. Change your future, change the world. Around the world. Young people are leading the way on imagining a better future. Together, we can help them take on the local and global challenges we're all facing to create a better future for all by giving them the skills to use game-changing technology to drive change. With Imagine Cup Junior by Microsoft, access future-focused learning resources, learn about how artificial intelligence works, and dream up world-changing ideas. Teachers, get your class started. Register for the challenge and download your free curriculum-aligned resources today. Imagine Cup Junior by Microsoft. Change your future, change the world. 
Awesome, there you go. Now, before we wrap up, may I call on Christopher Akol, or Akol, the project manager of Hactive Colab Incorporated, followed by Grace Ko, Microsoft's education program manager to share the guidelines, timeline, and some helpful tips as we start this initiative. Take it away, guys. Hi, hello, hi, hi everyone, and hello to all of our students and teachers or even guardians who are watching Imagine Cup Junior 2022. Whether you, whether you are watching this live or on demand, um, hopefully you were able to get some insights and, you know, get a few tips from our speakers earlier on how you can proceed and submit your entry to Imagine Cup Junior 2022. So my name is Grace. I'm an Education Programs Manager supporting Microsoft Philippines. And as mentioned by Ian earlier, this is actually the third year that Imagine Cup Junior is happening. And we're super excited to really extend this opportunity to more young learners, both in the public and private sector. And so if kayo ay na-inspire sa ating mga speakers earlier at sa advocacy nitong Imagine Cup Junior, uh, we highly encourage you to uh, take a look at the Imagine Cup Junior website and um, if meron kang kakilala na fellow student, di ba, who you think would best fit to join the program, by all means, you can share this recording and share the meeting link or itong event link sa kanila. Okay, so now I would be sharing to you what are the next steps if you would want to join Imagine Cup Junior. Okay, so first, if you are a student um, from, a, from a school or feeling mo meron kang gustong maging teammate, or meron kang makakilala sa school mo na gusto mong ayain na sumali sa Imagine Cup Junior, tell them that you would want to join the Imagine Cup Junior. And very, very important, kailangan meron kayong team leader. Okay, so um, a group of students must have a team leader for you to be eligible to join the competition. So pag sinabi natin team leader, this must be an adult. So pwede yung teacher nyo, pwede yung guardian, or pwede yung parent nyo, if game sila na tulungan kay sa process on how to join Imagine Cup Junior. So kailangan ang mentor natin ay 18 years old and above. Okay, so once um, once settled na kayo ng team nyo, um, yung team leader ninyo can actually register on behalf of you at uh, aka.ms slash ICJ2022 reg. So we have a landing page prepared um, where all of the resources, mechanics, and steps on how to um, submit your application is actually posted. So you may find out more details on that website. Now, after your registration becomes successful, your team leader will now have will now have access to all of our materials, including um, recorded sessions, um, PowerPoint presentations, and you know, for teachers who are watching this or who are planning to become team leaders, we actually have a toolkit that you can readily download and uh, share to your students who are keen to join the competition. And um, we've also received questions earlier, uh, whether if uh, the Imagine Cup Junior is a series of events or what have we actually prepared. So for here in the Philippines, um, in partnership with Hactive Colab Inc, um, uh, si Paul diba, and his team, we have prepared a series of boot camps, sessions, office hours or one hour sessions no, spread from now until April that you can join. And of course, pwede kayo mag-tune in and learn more from our group of experts. Also, um, our partners from Hactive would be inviting several mentors. Um, some of them are Microsoft Valuable Professionals. Some of them are IT practitioners. Some of them are um, graduates or alumni ng Imagine Cup. So you get to hear from them and you get to actually ask them questions. At For sure, mabibigyan kayo ng tip on how to uh, make your presentation really stellar and make it super impactful as you submit it to Imagine Cup Junior this May. And so um, in the next few slides, uh, I would be asking Chris, kasi meron tayong schedule of events and then guideline submission. So over to you, Chris. Hi, thank you, Grace for the details. So yeah, we're really excited to share with you the further um, learnings regarding AI and what it can do to help us, to help the community. So um, in line with this, uh, we at Hacktip, as partner of Microsoft, 
we have prepared um, learning sessions and boot camps for you. Um, and these are the series of events um, displayed on the screen for your guide. So it starts on March 29. So we um, remember earlier, Paul this um, went through quickly six topics, six lessons. So we're going to deep dive and uh, go through these lessons deeply and discuss further the details on this. So we will be tackling two lessons a day for the next three days from 29, 30 and 31st. So on your screen there, there's the schedule from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then to supplement further, we will also be um, sharing with you um, additional information or additional knowledge regarding um, citizen development framework, innovative mindset, so we will be tackling um, power platform here related to uh, AI builders. We will be discussing uh, power applications, power um, um, and, and everything related to this. So that will be on April 4, April 2nd, I mean, and then and, and April 9. And then um, to supplement that, April 4th and 5th, we will be on standby for tech consult and support. So you will have people on standby in case you have questions, in case you have clarifications about um, the lessons. So we have experts to answer your questions and support you um, live during this time. So on your screen, there are the, um, the time slots there are available. And then eventually on April 23rd, we have the hackathon itself. So that's going to be a great event. So we, we, uh, we encourage everyone to participate. And um, uh, next, sl next slide, please. And then for the details, you may visit our fa uh, Facebook uh, page, Facebook group page. So I guess everyone has Facebook now, no? so it will be easier for us to um, post details there so just drop by the Facebook page uh, posted on your screen. We will be posting details of the events there. Uh, we will be posting uh, links on how to register materials and other supplementary materials that you will be needing and you can use for this event. So if you have questions, you can also drop by the Facebook um, page and post your questions or clarifications there. So there you go. So it's, um, we're all excited to uh, share um, and see you on this event. So we're glad that everyone is here to, uh, to participate in this event. Yay, okay. So thank you so much, Chris and Grace. Yeah, and so we all know and where to check for the latest updates behind the scenes. And if you wanted to clarify anything, so feel free to visit their Facebook page. Now, as we end here to deliver her closing message, let us all welcome the Education Programs Lead of Microsoft Philippines, Clarissa Segismundo. Hi, Clarissa. All right, hello. And also while we're waiting for her, I just wanted to remind you as you check and follow their Facebook page, remind you lang of our hashtags, hashtags for the event. That's hashtag Imagine Junior Cup or Imagine Cup Junior 2022 and Imagine, okay, Imagine Cup Junior PH. Yeah, so don't forget because that's how we know what's going on. You can post your PTS and then you can also add some hashtags if you want. Hashtag on our way to success. Hashtag we're gonna win this 2022. Hashtag we got this. Woo! Energy. And also while we're waiting, I just want to ask if our students in the audience are still there. So continue along just a little bit more and then we're gonna be having our lunch because I'm sure that you want to have something to feed for your brain cells because you have a lot of planning to do guys okay once again I think she's here to deliver her closing message let us all welcome once again the education programs lead of Microsoft Philippines Clarissa Segismundo hi Clarissa welcome to Imagine Club Junior 2022 
At Microsoft, our mission is to empower every person and organization on the planet to achieve more. And we believe that our students are the change makers of tomorrow. We are so excited to see how you with your creativity, curiosity, and enthusiasm can make something that matters and how you'll be able to transform your ideas into action with purpose-driven application. On behalf of Microsoft Philippines, I'd also like to thank our partner Hacktive.io and our partners in the public and private sectors in the academic industry and our teachers, parents, and learners who continue to support Imagine Cup Junior. I highly encourage all of you to invite more students to participate in this program so that we can highlight your ideas and solutions that can change the world. We look forward to working closely with all of you. We look forward to helping you develop your skills and being successful in this journey. Good morning and good luck. All right, thank you so much, Clarissa. And once again, thank you to our speakers, partners, and thank you to everyone for being virtually with us on a Saturday morning. Imagine that. So, kayo na. I hope we sparked your interest in this year's Imagine Cup Junior. And also, let me just remind everyone to kindly answer our feedback form. Of course, we'd like to know. And what to think about our event and you can scan the QR code being flashed on your screens right now or just click the link that is posted in our chat box okay please do follow Microsoft's social media pages for further announcements and speaking of which let's make every moment count feel free to share all the latest happenings online by using our official hashtags once again that's hashtag imagine cup junior 2022 and hashtag imagine cup junior ph all right so this has been princess legaspi and together with microsoft we're extremely excited to see the ideas you'll formulate for you to drive change in this world thank you and enjoy the rest of your saturday